Support for For The Players, the pop culture as PlayStation podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, the best in men's below the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped recently launched the ultimate men's hygiene bundle, the Performance Package. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code FTP at au.manscaped.com. If my math is correct, and it might just be, that's about 8 million balls. For the players. I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Max Cooper. And this is for the players, the pop culturist position podcast with over 40 years of playing PlayStation and 10 plus years in that game's many combined. I want to thank you for joining us in this PlayStation conversation. This PlayStation conversation happens every Monday morning at 8am on podcast services, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and 9am on those YouTubes. If you'd like to take part in future conversations with us, you can. Come and check out our socials, Facebook, Discord, Instagram, and Twitter. All of those links can be found in the description below. If you want to join the conversation as it happens, head over to twitch.tv slash thepopculturist, where you can watch us record this show live, where you can jump in the chat and become part of the show. If you want to support the show, you can tell your friends, tell your family about this PlayStation pod. If you are listening to us on podcast services, so be sure to give us a five-star rating and a written review. If you are watching us on YouTube, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. I endeavor to answer every single comment. And if you want to support us financially, you can at patreon.com slash thepopculturist, as well as our merchandise store, podcast.com slash shop. We can buy shirts and other assorted shit with our logos on it. Or you can help support the brands that help that support us, just like Manscaped. So if you head over to au.manscaped.com, uh, but we'll have to talk about that a little bit Later. How are you, Max? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not too bad. Not yeah, too not bad. bad. So we're just having a discussion with the chat, by the way. So for those who don't know, uh, Popsy, which is what you're listening to, uh, we exist within a pretend wrestling promotion uh, called TCW. I believe it's called Transfer Twitch Championship Wrestling. It's run by a good friend of ours, Mad Dog underscore 1992 over there on Twitch. Uh, we have renders of ourselves in WWE 2K22 and uh, we were just discussing how Max needs to join our staple. Sorry, I was going to be like a real team. like, look at him thinking that not all wrestling's pretend anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. But this one's hey. pretending that I'm actually in a ring doing something. Uh, so yeah, so I think we're going to have to get you in, Max. I think Craig's going to have to uh, build you. Now this is this is your moment to. I thought you to wanted pitch. to start winning uh, matches, man. <clears throat> well, that's the thing. We uh, well, in order for you to, to to maybe we need maybe you're the secret recipe. Maybe you're like in Space Jam. You're the water bottle with Bugs Bunny. That's a weird cut. But yeah, maybe yeah, you're you're Bugs Bunny's water bottle to our okay. Space Jam. I'm, I'm Jordan's secret staff. Yeah, yeah. That sounds that sounds like a penis, but uh, you may also be Michael Jordan's penis. So this is your moment. Uh, what would you? If we kick the show off in like in a complete silly way, what should what should Max the wrestler look like? What kind of ring attire do you want? I feel like I I, I feel like I should be a luchador, wear a mask. Oh, some, some form of like ridiculously snazzy suit. <laughs> well, we're all well, we're pop corporate right now, so we've we've turned heel and we're all corporate. So, yep, the, the suit's there. So, suit with a luchador mask. Yep. Yeah, All right. Much. What kind of what kind of uh, flair a suitador, as, 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 as Mad Dog in the chat says? What kind of flares would you like on your uh, on your mask? A mask manager says Puck. That's probably a good way to go about it. No idea. Because like Ray Mysterio has like the bird, like the big birds on his cheek. You know, he has the, like the cross on the forehead. Did you want like you know some some variances to it, like? You want the fucking Harry Potter scar, you big dork, or like, and it, like just a, like a target, <laughs> like bullseye. Just, just like hit me here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In that case, we'll leave uh, the the mask flare up to uh, up up to Craig, but that's pretty cool. Oh, actually, so as a luchador, does that mean that obviously you're a manager, so you may not be I, I, in the ring? I, I need to be able to do sweet flips. You want flip flip flipping you does? Otherwise, there's no point. All right, if done. I can't do sweet flips. Like now, do you want? 
to have it be uh, correctly proportioned to your current size, height, and weight. Oh yeah, I want to be a short fat dude. But like, with flippies. But with flippies. Like, <laughs> obviously. That would be absolutely amazing. I done, Craig. I picture prob- like a bowling ball through the sky. <laughs> but in a suit with a fucking mask on. But in a suit with a mask on. That's amazing. That's something that I greatly need in my life. I think that's uh, well, Mad Dog signed it. He's in. He's like, so he's the, the, the TCW contract is, is there. It's ready to go. I love it. Apart from your future wrestling digital <laughs> debut, how you been? Yeah, not too bad. Anything, exi- been, anything exciting? Been a pretty good week. Uh, <laughs> I've, um, well, yeah, so I got a, I got a text message from my, my builder today. Hey! Hey! Okay. It's like, hey man, check it out. You've got shit on your but you've got shit on your property now. I'm like, sweet. So but like, is this flat- the same they've- shit from two weeks ago when some other prick dumped? Nah, so nah, so they've they've now flattened <coughs> all the ground out. All the all the pipes are in. They've, oh, okay. they've laid the formwork ready to lay the slab. Hopefully this week. Nice. So that's cool. That's happening. That's that's all exciting. Like I kind of forget that you're that you're growing a house just because it's taking so long. It's so long. I know, right? Um and. In other building-related news, I managed to score myself, because I'm a big old nerd, um, the Hogwarts Castle Lego set, thanks to... Uh, <laughs> friend me! Of <laughs> me! Friend of the show. Ryan Best. <laughs> so I was just <laughs> sitting there, like, trolling, uh, scrolling through fucking... Uh, trolling, sorry, is what I wanted to trolling through Marketplace. Because after building the uh, the Lego tall neck last week i am just hard itching for lego like something fierce like the complete like me, uh, uh, zen that i had while i was putting it together you know granted i was on a phone call at the time and it, there were some like legally things we were discussing and it was like kind of not the most funnest call but like i still was able to go ah, and just sort of build this cool tall neck um yeah and i'm just like oh just i can't afford brand new lego because I'm poor, I'm single income now, and like no one wants, can anyone want to donate me Lego? No, that's cool. Well, I'll go looking around. So I had a look and I went to like Toy World and I didn't want to do like a, uh, you know, like Star Wars is cool. I fucking love Star Wars, but you know, the spaceships are fine, but not the same. You know what I'm saying? And then I was like, oh, then I saw the Seinfeld set and I'm like, oh, wait, I don't really give, like, I like Seinfeld, but not enough to spend X. Now. And then I saw the Friends. I'm like, oh, wait, I don't even care how much. Ali- I- Ali really wants the friends apartment. Oh, the the because it's the two. There's the the apart- single apartment. And there's the two apartment. The two apartment yeah, one the- looks fantastic. Now, yeah. I don't. Yeah, I so said I don't like friends that much, but I'd build the shit out of that set. Mm. I put the shit out of it yeah. hard. Yeah. So my wife came home last week with the with the Darth Vader head. So I now have Venom, Iron Man, Carnage, and Darth Vader. Yeah. One of those things is definitely not like the other. <laughs> and like, I know that me right now, like just hard, like this is just my ADHD brain hard focusing on Lego because I got in, I got endorphins out of, I got dopamine. I'm like, oh, how good is dopamine, right? And then I just want to keep repeating that, repeating that, um, knowing full well that I can't afford it. But then I, during my trolling of Facebook Marketplace, and knowing that you had, like, you're like, oh, I've always wanted to, my 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 dream build is the Hogwarts castle. I was like, uh huh, uh huh. Uh huh. Hang on. Wait. And it's the full blown castle. And I'm like, does that normally go for like eight hundred bucks? Yeah. So it's seven hundred and fifty brand new, and I got it for four hundred and fifty. Yeah. And like com- and the, barely and the touched. Catch, the only catch was one bag had been opened, and like I went out there and had a look at it, and the lady who was selling it, she's like, yeah, just open everything up. If you're happy with everything, take it. If there's anything wrong with it at all after the fact message us and we'll organize replacement parts what a legend like cool about it. yeah so why was she pissing it off well uh it was her daughters and she's like um i don't have room in my house for this and i put my foot down so my daughter's selling it <laughs> nice. like, okay my gain <laughs> well then yeah then you and i had this intense discussion about like well what do you do now like because it's a fucker of a piece like it's huge and, yeah, like you're, so, and you, know, you moved to your new house in a couple of months so like do you build it now and then try transport it do you wait yeah, no, but isn't waiting the worst shit in the world it's sitting in a box it's, it's not going to be built until after we move but I've been looking at buying some like glass display cabinets mm. to put 
like because I've got a few pop vinyls now. I've got I've got these Lego heads, and ideally I, I will have like a studio space similar to yourself once I move into my new place, and I want some cool stuff to to put on display behind me so we can get rid of these ugly ass curtains and obviously new space, different area. Well, I'm glad but, you. you know, they can't. Uh, the people can't see it off camera because it's square compared to widescreen. But you well, normally it, it had be like right there uh, on on your right hand side. There there was a box of shapes that had been there for about eight months. So they're empty. But that box is long gone, so that's good to see. <laughs> um, so the but the issue is, it is quite a wide mm. and deep build Hot. that none of the cabinets are deep enough for it. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Not at all. So, uh, Fabes nineteen yeah. in the chat does add that we just moved house with the Hogwarts castle, and it was a nightmare. So they would understand. So maybe you've made the right call. Mm, but we went we went out today because Ali Ali was looking at getting a a gift for a friend for her birthday and she bought the uh, the Lego succulents because mm. you know why not and then she pointed out another Harry Potter set and I'm like oh, I kind of want that now but that's four hundred dollar he does what one's that it's it's the uh, the collector's headwig with the with the enrollment letter oh um, yeah I saw I that one too kind of want that and it has half as many pieces as the castle so it's like three and a half thousand pieces. It's like, ooh, that'll keep me busy. Oh, man. One, one thing, one build at a time. One build at a time. And the thing that, like, I love is that we are both, like, feeding each other's interest in Lego right now. As in, you're like, hey, this Batman cow's are only 80 bucks. But I appreciate you being like, I think you're going to afford 80 bucks. I'm like, hey, Max, this one's $450. Like, we have very different understand. Like, well, thankfully, we have very clear understandings of our financial fluidity right now. The heads are just good. The heads are reasonably priced. They're a couple of hours for a build. They're like a couple of hundred pieces and they look good. Yeah. Like, and they're easy to transport. Look, I've never done, like I've, I've never done this, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to e-beg right now. Hey, everyone support my habit, please. It's a new habit. I'd like for it to start. I feel it could be dangerous. <laughs> and I haven't live streamed in literally forever. I would, if people want me to, actually sponsor me some Lego. <laughs> I will fucking, I will build Lego on stream for funsies. And everyone's like, I don't want to fucking see you now, let alone building Lego. I'm like, yeah, touche. It's a good point. I, I understand where you're coming from. I appreciate it. Uh, so look, is that, is that a genuine e bag? Yes. Yeah. 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 Mostly no, but also a little bit. Just a little bit. Like if, if, if it happens I'm gonna buy fucking dick I'm gonna fucking buy sweet Lego out of it but anyways yeah oh, I wanna play oh, I, oh right now I'm thinking about Lego can we just kill the show and go talk about Lego now well yeah cause when we're, when we're leaving the store cause we're, we're in town and um, I'm like cause obviously we've got the we've got the box sitting on the dining room table with the the Hogwarts castle there's like four instruction and that's books. the worst part you look at it every day like and like it's it's massive, but then you go in and you look at like the style, like the like the death, the 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 destroyer or the or yeah. the ad ad or any of those, and they're like tens and tens of thousands of pieces. The boxes are like massive. They're like twelve hundred dollar redos. Man, <laughs> it's I like wish. a buck. A, it's like it's like a buck a piece. <laughs> like that's it really sounds like... beautiful. I I would I would love it. Absolutely love it. So, but yeah, let's, 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 hence our discussion last week how Sony should do more of them so then I can give a shit. Because, like, yes, yeah, so Friends is cool, Seinfeld's cool, but I would feel disingenuous, like, buying the Seinfeld one, be like, hey, Seinfeld's like good. Like, I enjoyed the show, it's really, really good, but, like, I don't love it in the same way that everyone else does. But like if they, like yeah, I, I mean, you were, I mean, you were looking at looking at knockoff bricks to to get like Breaking Bad stuff. Yeah, they had the Breaking Bad RV and like some knockoff brand on eBay. I was like, ooh, that could work. Because I doubt them ever ever like agreeing to license a fucking Breaking Bad Lego set because drugs. But yeah. Oh, speaking of just fucking weird things that aren't talking about PlayStation, uh, I went to the movies today. Didn't see a PlayStation movie or even a gaming movie. I went and saw uh, a movie called Everything Everywhere All At Once. So a friend of, friend of the show and Popsy co-founder Dylan, Dylan Bowden, hit me up a couple of days ago. He's like, what are you doing Sunday? I'm like, I don't fucking know. It's Tuesday. I'll see what happens. Because we're going to the movies. I'm like, okay. What time? 12.30. 
or what am, what am I saying? I ain't gonna tell you. I'm like, well, that's fucked. So I had a look, and there was a bunch of different things around 12.30, 12.45, and everything. And that was one of them. And the Little Minx was in there as well. I'm like, we're not going to see a Little Minx concert, are we? That'd be weird. Like, Doc Strange I'd already seen, so I didn't need to go see that again. And then we went and saw it. And all I knew going into this movie was that it was a, a Chinese-ish made movie. All the stars, all the main, the main actors were Chinese or of Chinese descent, and... Uh, and there's kung fu in it that's all I knew but holy actual shit was this movie deeper bigger and better than most things I've seen in the last I can't tell you how long just coming off the back of Doc Strange the multiverse of madness that movie does shit shit multiverse compared to this film holy crap like if you want to see what how multiverses can be done correctly this is the movie you have to see and the problem that i have right now max is as much as i want to sit here and just gush about this movie and i would if this wasn't a position show but i also can't because it hits spoilers really quick because you have to think about it that way because that like you go in knowing that it's this one thing and then you find out it's a bunch of other things like if I was to sit here and try to tell you what this movie was in a sentence, the best I can do is it's about a mother and a daughter and them trying to understand their relationship while also understanding the universe and the existential angst that comes with it while also uh, considering the idea of multiverses while also having awesome kung fu And I feel like I've just done the movie a disservice. Pretty much. Oh, so good. <clears throat> like, it's absurd. Like, there are moments where, like, the, it's, it, it is, like, I keep I keep using the, it's silly, but it's fucking deep. Both Dylan and I are just hard crying in this movie. Like, I had to hold everything in my entire being to not, like, like, hard, like, out loud, just bawling deep cry like i had to hold that shit in because i'm like i'm not doing that in a fucking cinema now granted i've been needing to cry for like weeks now and it just hasn't happened just my body wouldn't let me do it so i was already fucking primed but like even now i was, I was like i can't fucking ugly cry in my head at this fucking cinema at, you know for midday on a sunday um but yeah, Craig, if you want to see it, let's go. I'll 100% go see it again. I'd, I'd watch it again right now if I could. I would I would consider going, Max, fuck this show. I'm going to watch that movie again. And it doesn't so play damn good. Time. No, <laughs> so yeah. It's so damn good. Like, yeah, yeah it's, just, it's just, because the things that I love, like it hit a lot because it talks about like um, divorce and family and parenting and like when they say everything all at once, they ain't fucking kidding. It's angst, it's anxiety, it's depression, it's suicide. It's it's like your place in the world, how everything matters, but everything, but nothing matters. And how, you know, this is important, but that's not important. And this is important. To, oh my God, I can't fucking talk about this movie enough. So good. So, so damn good. Other than that, my week's been pretty chill. Played any games this week? Me? Uh, a few, actually. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> um, oh, me too, actually. I did actually sit down and play games. Yeah, a few. I, um, again, uh, going back to, to last week, I am still playing Double Two for Ladder, uh, just crunching through it. I'm now in that end game, just loot cycle of killing the same boss over and over and over again to get the pieces of gear that I need. Nothing too exciting happening there. Uh, retouched on Nintendo Switch Sports game's still fun uh and the last one uh in a weird change of pace is on pc i normally don't game on pc that often um but i picked up uh what's it called king arthur knight uh knight's tale which is like a an alternate history for the uh king arthur story Mm -hmm. where you play as mordred and you are trying to uh, destroy what King Arthur has become in this alternate telling where you play the bad good guy. 
<laughs> uh, it's got it's really cool. Uh, it's one of those turn based action RPG style games, um, with like grid combat. It's, it's very fun. Uh, uh, but other than that, not too much. Just my main things being Diablo this week, which is both really really sad and. <laughs> See, it's interesting. Like we're in this down window, like down time. It's just hitting. It's just hitting this. Oh, and I re- and I reinstalled uh, um, Assassin's Creed to start pushing through that again. A back, that, uh, a, a back, a back, back in the backlog hit, challenge. Gotta, gotta hit that backlog challenge. Yeah. yeah. Well, because we have to. Because all, all I can win this year is the backlog challenge. Because my draft I'm, is. I'm, we're almost half a year in. I haven't touched any of the three games yeah. that are on my backlog list. And You've my at least finished one. Yeah, and my draft is a hot mess. Uh, because Dead Space got pushed to next year. Uh, Hogwarts is not looking positive. Uh, Gotham Knights is coming out this year, apparently, but we can't... As the title of this episode suggests, and we'll talk about it a little bit later, how all games will be delayed forever. Um, there will never be a actual coming out on the first announced release date. In for, I, got, I can't see it happening. But uh, I played two games... Uh, well, three games this week. I played a bit more Root and Toot and Cowboy Shooting. Um, still enjoying Red Dead. That's my backlog game. I will get there. I'm deep. If, you, if you're enjoying that, you should really jump into Wild West. I should, but like, if I step away too hard from Red Dead, I won't finish it. And I need, and like, mind you, the back end of the year looks quiet. Like, you know, like I, I still I, is that is that because God of War is not coming out this year? Shut up! But also, you probably yeah. <laughs> There's no reason for them to. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute too. Holy shit! But like where i'm at right now is that if i step away from red dead i won't go back for a while i've I'm, I'm got that buzz right now I, I need to run with it but like i had my son over this weekend so he and i was sat down and played some games so he has been he has his little ipad mini that he kind of just peruses youtube on like youtube kids and he keeps coming across this one channel that does like hello neighbor content and i've heard about hello neighbor and how it's like sort of internet phenomenon for like kids and stuff and like I know it's kind of I'm at least more aware of it than in terms of I'm like oh it's not that bad compared to say like Five Nights at Freddy's so I was like fuck it it's seven bucks on sale this week I was like done I'll pay seven bucks and he and I can play some some random game together it's uh it's a weird title so the whole idea is that you break into your neighbor's house and the neighbor is pissy at you for doing so and will catch you and throw you out. So the idea is you need to solve the mystery of his house when he doesn't want you there because you're breaking into his house. It's very similar to the idea of like, you ever see that movie with uh, Shia LaBeouf, Shia LaBeouf, uh, Disturbia, where it's him like peeping through the door. Oh, yeah, 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 same yeah. thing as you see something suspicious happen and, he, and you're like, I have to find out the suspicious thing that like, you could just leave it. It's his business. <clears throat> but so it's so it's it's Bart Simpson spying on Ned Flanders when he kills his wife. A little bit, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but like, you go in the house and you're like, the house is all fucking weird and creepy, and you end up in the basement, and there's all the like, there's like three acts, and we we got through the first two, um, and it's like, I, it, so it's like a puzzle game, but like it's that puzzle game in the sense that it doesn't tell you what to do, it just goes, yeah. you need to get the red key, work it out. Which is insane for like a kid's game. But like it, the game has a level of relative creative freedom. Like it's not like a survival game and you have to build a bunch of shit. It's just like, well, you can pick stuff up and you can put stuff down. Think about it. Yeah. And then you realize you need to get onto the second floor somehow. And there's a there's a broken shelf out the front. Or there's boxes behind the house. Maybe if you pick up those boxes and bring them over there and make your own step ladder. And you're like, oh boy, you're on the roof. And that's pretty much what it does. And you're like, oh shit. So you just kind of solve minor puzzles until you get there. It's really cool. Like he, <clears throat> he's loving it. He just doesn't really give a shit about the missions. He just runs around and annoys the neighbor in the same way he played uh, like Untitled Goose Game, which is his entire motivation was to fuck off people in that town, which was great. Speaking of uh, Untitled Goose Game though, um, he also got, we, I picked up uh, un- Unpacking. Uh, which is a, speaking of like like how like uh, Untitled Goose Game. It's this independent Australian game. It's made by a team called Witchbeam, uh, who had previously made uh, Assault Android Cactus, um, which I remember playing years ago uh, at PAX, and that game was dope. It was a really cool twin stick shooter. Um, and then this, remember this caught my eye a little while ago. It was on PC and it was on Switch. So the whole idea is like you, you know, you're 2.5D shot of a room, bunch of boxes, and you just unpack 
the stuff into the house. And there's a series of levels. Um, and it's one of those things like each house or apartment or unit or whatever is a specific part of time. So it starts in like 1997 and then it goes 2004, then 2007. 2011 you're like you know so it's this what you're essentially seeing is the story of someone's life through the unpacking of their boxes as they move to new houses um and i didn't anticipate it having such a story to it I thought it would be like very similar like House Flipper or something. It's just like, hey, here's a series of levels. Deck it out how you want. Like it's pretty relatively limitless. You just put the shit where you want in the house. And next thing you know, I'm sitting there and I'm kind of bawling a little bit. Like it's just like not like a hard cry, but like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm welling up in my eyes. A couple of tears popped out and it was it was crazy. So like in the, the first couple levels, now I guess spoilers for, for those that are interested is that you know you're telling you're the story of this woman who she's a kid and then she goes off to to college or university and then she and she gets a partner and you move into their house and then suddenly you're back in your parents home again you know but it's the same bedroom but it's it's actually scaled it feels like it's scaled smaller it's really smart like the idea is that when you're a kid the room seems huge and then you get your own place and then someone moves in with you and then you move on to your own house and this and And the thing that got me, because I guess, you know, very personally, like I'm, I've moved a number of times in my life and I've hit certain beats in those houses as, as someone right now in this situation right now, where I've just had to, to relocate and put my entire life in boxes and start anew in a, in a new house. So I guess it's a little on the nose in terms of where I'm at emotionally. So it's made sense for me to get sort of like emotionally invested in it or something but i mean that in terms of because the thing that got me is all these steps and you see the you see the build up the you move into this house heartbreak back we back at your at the bottom getting your own space having that moment of independence having someone join your space and then the next house is is essentially a house and it's a family house and one of the rooms you have to put together is a nursery. So it's just a lovely story. And, and like it's, and the, it's set up to be that they're a same sex couple as well, which is kind of cool. It's really subtle. Like you just kind of pick it up if you know, if you, you know, you're like, I'm starting to unpack a lot of dresses. And you're, oh, okay, cool. That's nice. But I mean that in terms of like, and I rem- remember when like I set up my son's room with my, with my ex wife and, and at the house. And I remember how awesome that was and, and just how and how powerful it was. And, and then it's just one of those things that you, we start thinking about like how life has changed and how you we take different paths and different journeys. And, you know, it's just, it just, I guess it hit home for a little bit. It got kind of sad, but like, it's a very good game. Like, it's so simple. It's just such simple mechanics. Like open a box, it's a fucking plushie. All right, I'm going to put you there. And the game has some like, you know, defined rules. It's like, hey, this goes in a kitchen. You know, there it kind of has like some relative logic. Like, would you really put a pot in, you know, over here? Like, you'd probably put it here. So, like, there's there's finishing the level, which is just putting shit wherever you want. And then there's like completing the level, which is you put everything in the game's logic of appropriate space. And if it doesn't, it flashes red and goes, hey, if you think about putting this somewhere else, you could leave it. You can proceed on to the next level, I'm pretty sure. But like you put it in the right spot and then it kicks you on to the next three. It's ton of fun. It's on the uh, Pop C account too, if you're interested. Um, oh, cool. I thought, I thought it'd be something that you, you might get a kick out of. So Definitely I, check I, out. I picked it up through there so we could both have a play a play with it. But it's really cool, like uh, like a simplified art style. It's got this really nice like chip tune but not quite like a very nice sort of like soundtrack to it that kind of has this whimsy to it it reminds it, feel, it makes me feel a lot of story of seasons and like harvest moon and that sort of energy um which you know, everyone knows how much i love those games so uh yeah it's in this it's, it's one of those ones that i wasn't ready to play emotionally and uh, i didn't realize until halfway through playing it in the same way that me playing through that dra- that dragon cancer on pc i was like Oh yeah, this this game's getting rave reviews. I'll check it out. Next thing you know, I'm uncontrollably bawling, and I've never been able to finish that game. 
You know what I mean? And I, I, I at least I think I can finish this one. I think. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's what a game, what an absolute game. Uh, I'm looking forward to finishing that. Um, but yeah, other than that, I don't think I think I played any anything else. I'm still still impatiently waiting for Story of Seasons: Pioneers of Olive Town uh, to come to the PS4. Hopefully, it's not far away. Fingers crossed. <sighs> but anyway, I think that's all the uh, all the all the games we played. So let's do that. Let's 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 be shields for a moment, and then we'll get into the main topics. <clears throat> Like the leaves falling from the trees, Max, sometimes uh, sometimes our pants also fall down. And it is important to look your best in these kind of situations. And the way I make sure I'm always looking good is Manscaped. Because if I drop trowel, it's a little bit of cold outside. I need all the help I can get. You know what I'm saying? So it's time to bundle up with the Manscaped Performance for, for, Performance Package 4.0 inside the package. Uh, hey, uh, you'll find the Lawnmower 4.0 Trimmer, Weed Whacker, ear, uh, ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel back, a bag to hold your goodies. Manscaped has also moved beyond your down under by releasing their Ultra Premium Collection. This full body collection includes shampoo, body wash, moisturizers, deodorant that will have you smelling sweeter than the autumn air. And not only will the Ultra Premium Collective have you smelling great, but you can feel good about it because all of these products are cruelty free, paraben free, vegan friendly, and dye free. The best ingredients with zero compromise. That's right, and they're on the they're over my left hand shoulder here. If you want to see them, you know, including the the Manscaped lip balm, does not taste like ballsack. So you get twenty percent off plus free worldwide shipping with the code FTP if you head on over to au.manscaped.com. That's twenty percent off plus free worldwide shipping if. You use the code FTP at au.manscaped.com. Make sure you have the best package for your package and choose Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. Yeah, I got my got my Manscaped email two days ago saying oh, yeah. that uh, my 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 bi monthly restock is is happening. So I'm gonna nice. have some uh, some toner coming in, some crop mops, and a new shaving head for my lumber. Yes. See, the downside yeah. is like I did get like I did have one of the lip balms. I had it in my pocket, and I don't know the fuck where it went. Like like all good lip balm, it's gone. Yeah, I fucked if I know where it went. <laughs> I I opened my wife's uh, ashtray in her car, and there's like seven lip balms. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you please check it? I've not been in her car, but like, is my manscape lip balm in her car? <laughs> It, just, oh, it, it, they, it seems to congregate in her ashtray, apparently. Mm. But anyways, let's get to the section we call Inform the Players. We tell you about what happened this week in PlayStation. Now, Max, you haven't put it in here, but I'm going to kick this week's news off th- myself this time. Okay, cool. This week, it was... You throw in, in that non-PlayStation-related news. Hey, it's relevant. There's, there's some things to talk about. This week, it was announced over on Bethesda's social medias that both Starfield, which is Bethesda Softworks' uh, title, and Redfall, which is Arcane Studios' uh, next release, have both been pushed back into 2023. Now, this was on the huge reveal earlier, I think last year? Shit, moment last year? Uh, with Starfield wanting to hit the 22nd of, of November, 22. Uh, you know, just wanting to hit at like a particular target, like pretty date. Uh, and then and then delayed. So that's on the back of rumors that the engine's fucking shit and that flying isn't very fun. So, and then off again, once again, as I mentioned at the start of the show, like a couple of days before, Dead Space got announced, was originally booked for this year, 2023. And then, uh, what else got? Like Suicide Squad got delayed into next year as well. Mm-hmm. Like, left and right everything that's getting dates announced for it i believe i believe gotham knights took its date and then it just got pieced out yeah, it's gonna spoot it so in the next year so really this has completely blown open the back end of the year so aside from modern warfare 2 which we know will hit its date because call of duty somehow do it from come hell or high water but there's a couple problems here max as the, title, as the name of the episode suggests, games, all games to be forever delayed. Or delayed forever, whatever the fuck I worded it. To, like, originally, 
X amount of time ago, it was, ah, COVID. COVID is why these games are getting delayed. Two years in, what is it? Can we believe dates anymore? I mean, there's a bunch of different questions I have here about de- delayed games, Max. What's your thought? Well, I've said, it a f- I've said it a few times now. If you don't put a date on it, the game can never be delayed, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, which is my theory behind God of War at the moment. <laughs> um, there's obviously some, you know, during that time of Starfield, that you know, they've been bought into the, the, the Microsoft wheel and, and all that stuff, I'm sure. Like, although they re- remained autonomous for the most part, I'm sure there are there is some management that they have to deal with and who knows what that could be who knows what the what the issue is if if the rumors are to be true and the and the engine's just a complete hot mess it's it's i think in the wake of cyberpunk mm. delays aren't that bad yeah. because you no one wants a repeat of that because that that really did leave a a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. It uh you know CDPR lost a lot of uh their the, their customers' faith. Like I don't I I still haven't gone back and played Cyberpunk. And you're sitting Everyone, in a, you're I, sitting in a Cyberpunk I'm, chair. I'm sitting in a Cyberpunk chair, and I I said this last night. I think it's the only thing that they did right. <laughs> they but they didn't even do it the, the fucking uh, was it uh, 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 Secret Labs yeah Secret Labs just reskinned their own but, already really good chair but that's but that's what I mean like you you really do only have one chance at a first impression and it's better to be late to the party and look good than rock up still doing your makeup I guess yeah look I understand I understand that, and I, I a really shitty analogy. <laughs> yeah, no, that's actually a really good, that's actually a pretty good analogy if we're being honest. Like the the challenge that like I have with it is putting your socks on still. Yeah, like yeah, like you clearly your pants are still unbuckled at this point, and you're like, yeah, me. at least I'm trimmed down there. Yep, <laughs> I'm looking good. <laughs> Hashtag sponsored. Uh, look for me, like I don't have an issue with, with a delayed game because I, I very similar to yourself I believe oh good that means they're doing something like 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 does it suck to be like I'm so stoked this game is coming out on X date and then they, they they're like hey guys X date's not gonna happen we're really sorry we're gonna we're gonna try for this one yeah and then you're like well should I get excited for that date or is is that date just gonna come and go and you're still not gonna be ready like maybe maybe don't put another date on it like obviously they haven't they said we've pushed it back to 2023 2023 is a long window three, six, of five days, yeah. so you know at least they haven't gone oh, it's coming quarter one we're only a little bit behind schedule yeah they're, they're not they're managing that expectation of their consumers and their fans to be like it's not ready you really shouldn't play it at the moment we're going to push it back could be a couple of months could be longer it'll come out in 2023 and like that's the difficulty for me is like i, I understand a delay delay is good like in the way that cool it means it's going to be better right great but in theory part of me is just i guess it's the because of the cynicism that this has created and me just being in the industry for, for the while that time that i have is just that like i and they're like oh we're coming out in november i'm like cool see you in march is it is it or is it just microsoft being like Mm, we'd really like you to release it next fiscal year as opposed to this no, fiscal well, see, year. This, this, is, this is another thing because right. right now, Xbox have nothing. Yeah, they've bought all these studios and no, no one's bringing... No, they're not releasing it. See, like, I, I, like, like I, I'll talk about like delays in general first, but, you know, fuck it, let's jump to, let's jump to that now. So this is the thing. And this is why I wanted to bring this up because it, we, if we want to look at what PlayStation are going to do, because last week we were speculating around... Um, around them having this E3 summer showcase or summer US showcase, like does you know do they need to do it? And the answer kind of if is now no, right? Like because if the idea is to show them what the rest of the year holds, what the next twelve months holds, they didn't have to do anything, and it's probably going to go well for them. Really, you know, man, it's like you know at least we know in the some recent in the some near future we'll have God of War at least, but like. Microsoft, with all the studios that they have acquired, like they have nothing coming out in the foreseeable future. Nothing is dated. 
Well, I mean, it is interesting that that Arcane expected such a quick turnaround after releasing Deathloop. So it's it's interesting to see what what caused the because obviously they were very vague in their uh, their posting of 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 why the delay happened. Mm. Um, but yeah, you're right. They've it'll be interesting to see what they do. So it's the difficulty challenge. Like I'm like I'm not I'm not sitting here going that like you know. Because PlayStation, we're, they're in a similar boat. Outside of God of War, we have no idea what the future holds. So, like, that conversation around, like, Microsoft don't have anything. Like, it's not like it's, this is an us versus them. This is a greater issue, right? And this is the thing we discussed before. A game that never has a release date can never be delayed. And right now, they're not announcing shit. Because, A, they don't know when they can deliver. Or, you know, like, even the example, like, they got Spider-Man 2 and Wolverine and Wonder Woman. And all these things that popped up in there in that last state of play they did. No, be fucked if they know when it's coming. Yeah. Fucked if they know, right? And aside from God of War, they have nothing. Now, I'm not sitting here going, oh, Microsoft are mishandling their studios. Eh, a little bit. But, like, you know, Starfield and whatever, like, that's out of their control. If Bethesda are as autonomous as they claim to be, then this is on them. And do you think, you know, off, especially off the back of Cyberpunk, like, okay, it makes sense. Be cautious. And especially then you go back one more game, you're Fallout 76, a game that was handled incredibly poorly and was in, received horrible reception and then you go back another one and you've got fallout 4 which got demolished off the back of the witcher 3 because that game was was made in such isolation that they didn't take into the world around them they didn't consider the changes in role-playing games that have taken place between fallout uh three and, and its expansion sorry on oh, new vegas sorry and then over into fallout 4 so I understand, but like Bethesda's uh, Bethesda Software specifically, their hesitation to, you know, to release it on, on shitty. But like, with that in mind, are Bethesda no longer excused for releasing buggy messes? I mean, they've always released buggy messes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So but are they, they no longer going to be excused for that? Mess. I don't know. It's it's hard to say. Like, you know, there's there's times where people will overlook them as charming or adds a an interesting quirk to the title itself and one one that springs to mind for me personally was the friday the 13th game like Mm. that was riddled with buggy mess you know what most of the time they were fucking hilarious and they made they made the game fun was it annoying at times sure but did i did it cause me to laugh every bloody time also yes <laughs> so you know when the game is still playable but they've got those you know sometimes characters are just randomly floating around in t poses like cool it's funny yeah. <laughs> as long as the as long as the game's playable and not completely broken like cyberpunk was to the point where you know save files were getting corrupted you couldn't finish missions because uh, checkpoints weren't weren't cl- uh, weren't ch- uh, clicking through properly. That game was was a mess. There mm. there wasn't any you know lovable bugs or funny little quirks to it. it. The game was fundamentally broken. Yeah. So. Yeah, it, it's a, it's a tough balance, and, and I, I don't want to get too much too into the weeds on it, but it's just kind of like, I yeah I just. I don't know. Like, my, I guess it's my cynicism. Just like, can we fucking believe any of this anymore? And like, look, knowing that it's a business and it is the games industry, it's the games business. And like, every time they announce a release date, it's just so you can get your pre-orders in and they can take your money. And then knowing full well that they could just can it and or push it back at any given point. Like, that's just me just being whatever. But yeah, for sure. Anyway, let's move on, Max. What's you know, what's the next bit? Because we, we, well, we, we've used a lot of, you know, silly jargon in the chat we just had but uh you know so some someone somewhere may may not have picked up what we're putting down yeah so thanks to uh playstation.com we they have a uh they have um accrued a list of popular gaming related terms it is your uh a to a to z guide on what to say where to say it and what they actually mean 
so you too can fit in with all the cool kids. See, when I saw this article, I sent it to you and be like, we need to talk about this in the news because my instant feeling from it was, hello, fellow kids, here's all those gaming terms you need. And then you read it and you're like, no one says fucking any of this shit. But I mean, in certain spaces, they do. Like, you, you know, they've they've literally, you know, you go to that web page and there's across across the header is is your alphabet a, a a through Z. You click on it and it gives you a list of word gaming related words of that, like beginning with that letter. And um, some of them are fine. Uh, some of them I, I I would argue against to a degree. Uh, for instance. Uh, under F, they have FF listed, which they uh, they claim is an acronym meaning friendly fire. FF refers to any situation in which players are vulnerable to attacks from their own allies, or to, or to, or the, to describe the act of being attacked by an ally. For me, as a uh, who who predominantly uses that term in League of Legends, FF means forfeit. Mm -hmm. It means. 15 minutes has passed in the game. There is no possible way this is, this game is going to turn around or win. So you hit slash FF, you forfeit the game. It, it, it boots up a, a voting system and your teammates can vote whether or not that they want to forfeit and move to the next game instead of wasting the next 30 minutes of their life. Yeah. Like, uh, it, there's a lot of very specific terms in here, especially around, like... Uh fighting games which is interesting mm. like the, and like a lot of them they're, st they're standard sort of like beats so there's not like you know uh bullshit gamer jargon like they're all correct terms there's talks about like ray tracing and judder and you know like you, this and that and like iframes and like all these key words that i just sort of take for granted i guess because we just we've been doing it for so long i just don't think about it but i guess how the fuck did i learn about you know i'm sitting here once again cynicism through the wazoo being like oh who the fuck needs a list of alphabetical game terms? Me, when I started. I mean, to a degree, the games that use them do a good job of onboarding you. Like, you know, you look at all those old school RPGs where you... There's another one. Um, they teach you what HP is or what SP is or what MP is. Yeah. Um, probably the most hilarious one <clears throat> on this is um, Get Good, <laughs> which is the... It's very outdated, uh, though. Uh, is it though? I mean, Elden Ring only came out five weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, but no one takes that term seriously is what I'm getting at. Like so, noob tube is in there. Who the fuck still calls it noob tube? Mm. Who even uses the I, term noob anymore? Is that still around? Or have I, I we know, just, have play, we just aged out of it and it's still there? I don't play FPS games anymore. That <laughs> FPS also on the list, everyone, in case you weren't sure so i it, it's funny as a as a quote-unquote gamer this list is quite funny but i mean it's um looking at it it's just it's seeing that 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 meme like hello fellow yeah cool kids like Thank, yeah thankfully it's not too bad which which is all good but anyway speaking of fucking terminology you're probably gonna know about firmware max is that on the list Oh, it is, of course. Oh no, it's, oh, did, did no, it make the, it, did it make no, the no, no, no. did it make no, no. the alphabet the alphabet list? No, I don't think it's technical. Oh, well, that's thing. that's an important one. Sony mm. put firmware on there. Anyway, firmware updates this. Uh, another one dropped this week, weighing in at just over one gigabits gigabyte. Sorry, a new firmware update is available for your PS5, and let's all say it together: this system software update improves system performance. That is it. Woohoo! Put that fucking in your, in your A and B list. <laughs> So on the back of uh, talking about people buying developers, let's talk about Sony and Destiny, uh, Sony and Bungie. So whilst Bungie will remain uh, largely independent, their knowledge and input will help the output will help output the numerous upcoming live service games Sony has in its pipeworks. While the billion dollar buyout is currently being investigated by the FTC, which we touched on last week. It seems uh, Sony is not concerned whatsoever. Quote, This forecast is based on the assumption that the acquisition of Bungie, which is currently under review by the relevant authority, will close in the third quarter ending 31st December 2022. So they, they, they're just like, yeah, it's going to happen. It's fine. Yeah, so I love the idea. It's going to close by the end of the year. We're not stressed. It's all, it's all good. 
because that because uh going back to last week their main concern was that bungie was going to become a first party studio and that's just not the case yeah so one of the things we if, oh. for anyone's interested that hasn't checked it out go check out episode last week um we talked about all, all about this in depth but one of the things that was brought up was the idea of a Japanese company buying an American company. That's probably why the FTC is getting more involved than ever before. You know, we touched upon all last week in terms of Embracer Group and Microsoft and how no one gives a shit about that, but apparently they give a shit about this. But um, look, it just seems that they're, that they're it's, a, it's also part of the regular investigation mixed with a little bit of extra for some reason. Um, like this has gone into the second stage. Which, but if Sony aren't worried about it, apparently there's a new head of the FTC who's like fully got like a massive hard on for um, in the game space for people purchasing a bunch of. So it'll be interesting to see yeah. what happens. And as Eminem, but, did, as Eminem did did once say, you know, the FTC won't let him be, so let me be me, so let me say. And they try to shut him down on MTV, but it feels so empty without him. Bluber, Max could be joining PlayStation Plus. This is the new PlayStation Plus, not the one that we have fang dangling right now. A document Dude, don't dating... Forget that, don't forget that starts in like a month. Holy shit, that does and, start and we, in like a month. And we still have no idea what games are coming to that service. Yeah, I'll give it like two weeks out. They'll be like, oh no, here's fucking Siphon Filter. There you go. Tom. It's supposed to be like 700 games and they're just like, so far we know none. We'll just wing it. Yeah, it's, it's most of the games that are already on. It's all the PS Plus games you have plus whatever's on now. That's 700 for sure. So a document dating back to the 18th of April 2022 suggests that select games from Bloober Team's catalogue could be coming to the newly formed PS Plus in the future. The paperwork, which describes a, quote, significant license and distribution agreement with Sony Interactive Entertainment, end quote, alludes to select Bloober titles being made available as part of a, quote, new distribution system, end quote. Bloober team will inform about the details, including the release dates in separate reports. The document concludes as the machine translated from Polish. Now, Max, a couple of things here we need to think about when it comes to the bloobers. He's obviously the median, medium, 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 which was originally an Xbox exclusive, which then became not so much a place, uh, an Xbox exclusive as it's now on the Playstations. It's not very good from memory. Like, mm, I haven't played it, it I remember it being really shit from whatever I heard. I have no idea what else Bloober have done, but part of me wants to tie it into this next one. Well, here, let me just quickly... Yeah, because obviously they were... Uh, so they did uh, Layers of Fear, Observer, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blair Witch. Um, Observer was pretty good. Blair Witch that. was okay. I, I, th- I think it reviewed kind of well. Mm. But the thing that we know Bloober are working on in the future is a Silent Hill game. So we're just going to go maybe. straight to the next story. Maybe. That was the rumor mill anyway. The rumor mill is the blue potato <laughs> game like Silent Hill. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> so Max, run through it. So, so as you alluded to, the Silent Hill rumors are back and we've all heard that Konami's horror IP is being brought back in numerous ways. Bloober Team is said to be involved and a separate game is also allegedly but probably not being made by Hideo Kojima. And the latest in this ongoing saga is the new leak courtesy of dust golem who has some degree of reliability uh, in a handful of tweets the so-called insider shares four images apparently related to the new silent hill game uh, they insist the pictures are legitimate and claim <coughs> to have further proof off their sleeve like most insiders each of the pictures have been taken down due to copyright claims and dust golem's account has been temporarily suspended which kind of has to make you wonder is there some mm. truth to these images so if you are wondering what the images are uh there's one of a woman's face made up with labels and with messages like i hate myself resting just below the surface another image features a hundred sticky notes with creepy figures at the end of red uh, creepy figures at the ends of a red hallway and the final two pictures just show decrepit rooms full filled with rubbish and the wallpaper peeling off the walls so if there's no truth to these images, why would they be copyright struck, and why would a person's account be banned? And the level of uh, once again, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire, and the amount mm. of smoke that we continuously see around Silent Hill is getting like it's choking people, like it's choking us out. Like, how have they not announced this yet? Now this is on the back right <clears throat> of Konami having their best fiscal best financial year. year like ever. Like, so I, 
are they just want to keep swinging? Because this is how you want to back end it further by start, by throwing <laughs> some Silent Hill in there. Ooh. And then like with Metal Gear or Castlevania, like shit's getting exciting. But like to me, I didn't see these pictures because they were fucking long gone by the time I wanted to look for them. They 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 are still available. Um, they're obviously screen cap. They're they're yeah. still out there. You can see them. But uh, not just I, I've expressed my love for Silent Hill before. Uh, in that I it's the it's the game that got me into horror games and then recently b- just due to it being unavailable because they don't exist right now I have shifted my love to Resident Evil especially with Resident Evil 7 2 Remake 3 Remake 4 um, I'm very excited for this and I will continue to be until it eventually comes out uh, it's just interesting like the reason I wanted to connect these two stories together is you know there has been the longest rumor mill that like Sony was going to acquire Konami as one of them right and like maybe this is part of it maybe like well we've acquired the rights to silent hill so not konami bought out like completely but like hey we own silent hill now and you're going to get all the old games on ps plus hence blue and then with blue is coming they're working on it and with that to get a taste of what blue can do before silent hill drops here's all their old games because if in this part of this backwards compatible PS Plus, if you give me all of the of, of, of like all the fucking Silent Hill games, like one through to four, Shattered Memories, you know, like give me give me give me all of them. Book of Memories, Shattered Hope, Book of Memories, Book of Memories and Shattered Hope. There's two different games. I will run through all of those. Like backwards compatibility, nine times out of ten, I don't give a shit. But if I can play all the Silent Hills again, oh, oh. You say that until you turn the first one on and your 4K TV makes it look like asshole and you're just like, maybe not. No, but I did. I played like through the, the PS Classic because it's on the PS Classic, right? And it still holds up. Like it's it, the tank controls are jank as shit. But other than that, like it plays well. It's still spooky. And like the way it uses fog to create really cool, really cool atmosphere. And you can't see like more than a meter in front of your face is actually because really the game fun. Didn't load anything else. In. That's exactly I, why. And it's dope. They weren't using it to make it spooky. But it worked. Fucking but it fucking worked. <laughs> because then they did it in two and three. Uh, and then when they remastered two and three, it came out shit because they removed a bunch of the fog. The fog is what makes it. Silent Hill is important. Fog is important in Silent Hill Universe Max. And four was really cool. I, everyone shits on four. I thought four was cool. Um, I really quite dig it. So to me, I know I'm totally pulling at straws. I don't, to make- I don't think I've ever played a Silent Hill game. Yeah, okay. I've, I've been a I've been a Resident Evil guy. Yeah. Throughout I- my career like, yeah i remember i remember book of memories i think was one on ps3 you remember that came around came out a very similar time to alone in the dark inferno which was i think shit. i played i think i played one on vita though that's shattered mem- dreams memories whatever mm-hmm. yeah it's a w- really weird like 2.5 isometric yep. sort of yeah, yeah. We- it was fucking weird <clears throat> speaking of weird this is a fun one <laughs> ea sports and fifa EA Sports will officially abandon the FIFA license for its line of football slash soccer titles, beginning with 2023's game. The publisher has flogged its soccer sims as FIFA for almost 30 years, but has decided to part ways with football's international governing body. Following the release of FIFA 23 later this year, this series will henceforth be known as EA Sports FC. It's in the game. Uh, it's imperative to note that this won't affect EA Sports' long-running relationship with leagues like the Premier League and the Champions League, meaning that EA Sports FC will continue to feature real teams and players from all around the world, while the World Cup, which is scheduled to take place in Qatar later this year, will be included in FIFA 23, but it won't feature in EA Sports FC moving forward. EA Sports says that that the breakaway from FIFA will give it the opportunity to innovate and crucially evolve. In addition to an enormous asking fee, uh, FIFA was demanding to extend the FIFA license. There were reports that the organization were preventing the publisher from being as nimble as it would have liked to be. This is because any additions and or updates to the game had to pass approval. Now, what made me laugh the most, I think FIFA's statement back were like, well, you just fucked up now, didn't you? yeah yeah it was it was a great read like so <clears throat> it's funny so my understanding is that ea have re- pretty much kind of similar to what you said have reached out to all the clubs 
People are like, hey, we still want you in our game. We still want to have access to your players. We want to have live rosters, all that stuff. And everyone's like, yep. Uh, <clears throat> well, no, everyone. The, it seems like the only downside is you won't. There will be like no quote World Cup. Yeah. Like FIFA World Cup. But they'll Cup just make the mode. EA Sports FC World Cup. Like, okay. Yeah. Woohoo. Yeah. You know, just rebrand. But like, it's all made up of the points don't matter <laughs> it is very known on the record that fifa is one of the most fucking corrupt organizations to ever grace this world and it's just like baffling that like they're like eh, it's fine it's just fucking fifa let's just party with it like there's one exorbitant amounts of i don't it's whatever what, yeah. whatever like it's, they're not they're not the games for me and I sense some, some people will be disappointed. But if all the teams I, coming back, it's cool. It's just fun to watch the absolute petty disagreement between these two companies. I, I just love the way that EA Sports are like, yeah, we're going to innovate and it's, we're going to evolve. And no, FIFA you're not. Reason, and FIFA was the reason why we didn't we, we released the same soccer game over and over and over again for the last 30 years. Then can they explain Madden? Can they explain every other game they've ever made ever? And this is a piece of lame <laughs> iterate. Like they are the masters of the annualized franchise. Like, yeah. did Maxis do the same thing when they when they did Sims Three and made them pull out a bunch of shit like swimming pools? Was was that what it was? Was Maxis being like, "Oh, that Sims license"? Like, no, no, EA, you are the problem. You have been the problem this entire time. External licenses are not the problem. It's you. All right, Ryan. <clears throat> Quick bits. Gotham Knights has cancelled previous gen versions to focus on current gen. Good. No, there will be no PS4 or Xbox One versions. Good. Gotham Knights will also feature no microtransactions and will not require an online connection for solo play. What, also now, good. Was it this game or there was another game? There was another game this week that was just like, hey. This next one, no micros. And like, yeah, but you're part of the prop. Like, you're the reason that they're bad. Fuck, what game was it? There's another game that was announced this week. I think it was, or something that was announced this week. I forget what it was, but there was something that they were like, I, yeah. hey, no micros. Like, I, I, the thing I don't understand, right, is they're like, this is not a selling point. The idea that your game doesn't have microtransactions isn't a selling point. Because you I, I, put them in there. I mean, I, I guess for games like this, they're like they're they're saying you're not going to get skins to make you look different to your party members. No, no. As opposed to you will not have to pay for them. Remember, <laughs> Avengers. You know, was like was it there was like was it Avengers was originally like there is no microtransactions. Remember, remember the big announcement. Then you had to fucking no no Battlefront two. My apologies, Battlefront two. Yeah, I was gonna say I thought it was cosmetics only for Thingo, and then they lowered the XP gain and went, we're gonna sell your boosters. Yeah, Battlefront two. So you have to rather you just have to bust your fucking ass until it's unbearable. You know what I mean? It's like they like they make the market, they choke out the market, and then to suddenly pat themselves on the back for fixing up for stepping away from a problem that they created. So I stabbed you like, hey. We're not going to stab you anymore. It's like, then like why'd you stab thing. me the first time? <laughs> and then I go over there and someone thought saw that it was successfully, like, fiscally viable to stab me. So everyone stabs me, but I should like you because you don't stab me anymore. <laughs> Yet you've demonstrated no trust that you won't stab me out after the review window. Crash Team Racing. Hey, man. It's old school. It's the way it used to be. No microtransactions. All the reviews are done. Sweet, cool stab. This industry is fucked. <laughs> Criterion Games and Codemasters Cheshire have merged into one gigantic Need for Speed studio. In Battlefield 20, 2042, Buzzy says in the chat as well. But once again, that game just didn't fucking do good. But that's that's probably that's probably not uh, EA's problem. That's uh, it's the licensing um, from someone else. That's. No, nah, it's, it's not the fact that EA is just pressuring the games to, to do whatever. Blech. Cool, <laughs> massive, Ryan... need for, ma massive need for speed speed studio. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. As Ryan alluded to earlier, Dead Space Remake announced its release date set for January 27th, 2023. Thank you, Draft. My draft is <laughs> fucked. Fucked. Dying, <laughs> Dying Light 2 Story DLC has been pushed back to September. 
Uh, big Final Fantasy news could be coming in the next few uh, months as the series celebrates its 35th anniversary. Are you, are you all like nip hard for whatever? Because we, we've been talking about this. Like, I, 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 st- I still don't think 16 is coming out this year, despite the fact that they're, they're, they've said the whole game's done. We're just bug fixing. I, st- mm. I still don't think it's coming this year. I think it's early next year, which sucks because I have a feeling that was on my draft list. <laughs> which was? Final Fantasy? Final Fantasy 16. I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm fucked. I, I, yeah, you have slightly less games that are not coming out this year. You're fine. Uh, Sega says loads of new games are coming this year, including remakes and remasters. Okay. Uh, and the big one, Elden Ring has sold more than 13.4 million copies in its first five weeks, making it the highest selling game of the year, beating out Call of Duty Vanguard. This is huge because Call of Duty has been the best selling game every year for like ever. And like, yeah, and so and they've outsold it in five weeks. Yeah, and this is insane. So this like, it's it's difficult for me because Elden Ring is f- f- like I think the hype machine got it. Hence why everyone's bought it. Fuck off! The game's great <laughs> for you. <laughs> Not everything needs to be for everyone, right? No, but I imagine there's, I, I there's, imagine thirteen point four million of us who are fucking loving this. And game. I imagine there are close to like nine million of those people who went, "What the fuck is this?" and don't play it anymore probably it's exaggerating but like i you know, i understand that like everyone's like oh. i'd love to I, I should i should turn the playstation on and check like the trophy list to see how many people have like what the percentage well, of platinum trophies for for elden ring it's is. A, it's reasonably high and it, it's like as in like because whoever the people that want to get it are dedicated to getting it but like the the drop off is huge but those yeah. that see it through see it through mm. it's really weird sort of like a, it's really weird data set to look at because like in most of them you see like in most games you'll see like a very high in those early trophies and then it slowly just peters out but it almost like it goes high drops and then just goes plateau so as in whoever's left just fucking works it out till it's done it's pretty impressive actually uh upcoming releases uh for this week max vampire it's, the masquerade probably more but i i couldn't find them yeah vampire the masquerade swan song ps4 ps5 may 19th dolman don't know what that is ps4 ps5 may 20 I, I may pick up Vampire the Masquerade. I well, I know you. This is this has been on your list, hasn't it? No, Masquerade two. No, so Bloodlines? there's like there was like three Vampire the Masquerade games in development all at once. I think Bloodlines got delayed indefinitely. Yeah, one of them just releases a free to play battle royale, and then there's this one coming out next week. This mm. week. Well, before we jump out for the night, Buzzy C Lee in the chat, who I haven't seen around these parts in a while. Hey Lee. I read you out before, but it's good to see you. Uh, they have asked, what's your take on microtransactions if it's cosmetic only? People want to spend their money. Let them spend their money. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. Okay. Yeah, it's like, for me, it's the same. If it's, like, it's, 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 it's one of these weird spaces, right? But like, it depends on the game. If the game's entirely built around like that cosmetic, like a Fortnite or whatever, that's a bit different. But like, I personally don't buy microtransactions just because I don't. Like, I'm very lucky in that they don't. Like, uh, I'm tempted here and there. Like, impulse is a problem of mine. Hence, you know, my it's all part of my big ADHDs. But like, I just choose not to because if I engage, I end up engaging completely. So I have to not get not get involved. Like. And I'm, thankfully, I don't play a lot of multiplayer games. So as a result, I don't get exposed to a lot of sort of cosmetics. But I just have an issue with it as a marketing tool to say that we no longer have microtransactions. Uh, a lot of games that have battle passes, I find do them very well. So I know, I think the, the three that I know off the top of my head that I know quite well is Rocket League, Call of Duty, and Fortnite. Once you buy one, you gain enough of the premium currency by fulfilling your battle pass to get the next battle pass for free. Well, because you've earned that currency back that you paid to get it in the first place. So as long as you don't, on a whim, spend that currency, you only have to buy the battle pass once and you can essentially get the rest of them for free as long as you keep playing the game. But once you fall off, you lose that ability to gain that premium currency 
and then you would have to buy yeah. the next one. Because, like, I know when Craig and I were playing Red Dead Online last year, we had the same thing. It was the idea of, like, oh, you know, the, the their season pass was 25 in-gold game bricks or whatever, and mm. the game gave you 25 bricks if you just completed the game spot completed the battle pass and then plus all the extra cosmetics and the guns and whatever like it gave you all those extra benefits and you were guaranteed like if you did all of it you were guaranteed to get 25 back sometimes i think they even gave you more you know to sort of incentivize you to do it and then you would help get to keep you going right yeah so i understand like that whole carrot stick mentality and that's cool i don't know i'm just very lucky that i that i don't buy into that shit I'm also too poor to do it, so it works out well. It works out well. For I, me. I, I mean, I jumped on Fortnite the other night after I got home from seeing Doctor Strange, and there was a Wanda skin. I'm just like, mm. yeah. See, like, I kind of want to go back to Fortnite just and keep waiting for God, for Kratos to come back, for Nathan Drake to come back, for like Aloy to come back, just so I can go in there and buy them. Because like, that's literally I don't even play Fortnite. I just want them, and that's mm-hmm. see, this that's the downside. They're like thirty bucks a piece or whatever. I'm like. Ugh. I can't do that. Or I'll get the battle pass. I'm not going to play it. You know what I mean? It's 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 a tough space. Tough space. Anyways, that does bring us towards the end of the show. Thank you everyone for joining us uh, once again. Even though we ended up talking about a fucking movie for like 20 minutes at the start and a bunch of other bullshit, but uh, yeah, it's cool. quiet at the moment. But next month's going to be a banger. Yeah, next month's looking a bit with, gnarly. with all the with all the with all the the winter games fest yeah. stuff. Oh summer yeah, game. yeah. Well, the Winter summer games, games fest for us, but you know. Yeah, whatever. there should be hopefully should be a lot of news in the coming weeks. Speaking of coming weeks, uh, if lots anyone is world, around, lots of world premieres. Yeah. Get ready. If anyone's around the Geelong area at the back end of this month, be sure to come check out DMDU Deathmatch Down Under. The friends of mine, I work the show. I'm the audio visual dude uh, the, at the Palais Melee at the Palais. Um, come check it out. Good, good bit of stupid wrestling fun. Matt, you should totally come. Think about it. No, you won't. I'll think about it, but yeah. <laughs> like that's as far as it'll go. Pretty much. <laughs> Craig's going. You can hang out with Craig. I mean, I like Craig, but <laughs> you know. like, I like Craig. I don't want to fucking I, hang I out mean, with I, him for I a mean, whole I, I mean, I like Craig, but I don't know if like wrestling's the way to. Remember what happened last time you got me to hang out with Craig and wrestling? I fell asleep on the fucking couch. That was, yeah, that was fun though. That was that was a good laugh. <laughs> All right. Well, if you're not going to send us home, let's get out of here. It's like um, this PlayStation conversation happens every Monday morning at 8 a.m. on podcast services, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and 9 a.m. on those YouTubes. If you'd like to take part in future conversations with us, you can. Come and check out our socials, Facebook, Discord, Instagram, and Twitter. All of those links can be found in the description below. If you want to join us as the conversation happens, head over to twitch.tv slash thepopcultures where you can watch us record this show live, where you can jump in the chat and become part of the show. If you want to support the show, you can. Tell your friends, tell your family about this PlayStation pod. If you are listening to us on podcast services, be sure to give us a five-star rating and a written review. If you are watching us on YouTube, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. I endeavor to answer every single comment if you want to support us financially you can at patreon.com slash the pop culturist as well as our merchandise store pop culture.com slash shop where you can buy shirts and other assorted shit with our logos on it but you can also help support the brands and help support us just by heading over to manscape that's au.manscape.com use the promo code ftp save yourself uh 20 off and get free worldwide shipping but until next week i'm ryan betson I'm Max Cooper. And that was for the players. <laughs> oh, 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 shit. Uh, 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 Craig's working on your wrestler. That's got, a, nice. that's got an early build. I just got an early build. <laughs>